Welcome back to First Take Live. We're talking with Vic Beck, a financial truth educator, as I call him. By the way, I just want to let you know something. that One thing that I noticed about Vic when I went to see him a number of years ago in Coburg, and since then I've heard about him, is that he's always saying to people, figure this out for yourself. I'm just telling you where I got the information, and go and check it out yourself. He says, don't believe me. Don't believe anybody. Right. Go and check it out. And so tonight, if, if you're twigged to this sort of idea... It's not done here, because you're going to get slaughtered out there if you try and take this information and don't go get the backup information. And that educator is with me right now, Vic Beck. All right. So, Vic, we talked about the, uh, the difference, uh, $1 billion. Now there's only $650 million. Yep. And, and, and so there's a shortfall of, th uh, of uh, $350, th million. $350 million, let's say. Yep. Okay. So, again, collectively amongst all the workers across Canada, collectively we are short $350 million to buy back the fruits of our own production. Right. We just simply don't have the money amongst all of us to buy back what we did. Because they, they, the government only, well, there were deductions. Deductions. And whatever they, for whatever reason, that's all we ended up with. That's right. And then again, with, on that thousand, uh, not billion dollars is PST and GST, which is another 13% on a billion dollars, you see. And this is before profit-taking <laughs> or selling to a distributor who wants to make a profit, selling to a retailer who wants to make a profit. So that billion dollars could easily be $5 billion dollars. And the worker still has only six hundred and fifty million. So now you're saying that this continue if this continues going up, we have bankruptcy. Well, that's it's, it, if I may pick up on and on that disparity again of that okay. difference between them. We'll just stick with the bare bones here. The maximum, the, the minimum purchasing price then of the goods is a is a billion dollars. Okay. And the maximum purchasing power amongst the people is six hundred and fifty million. So the question becomes, where are we going to get the other $350 million that we don't have collectively? Correct. Okay. In comes the bank. All right. They would be happy to lend us that $350 million that we don't have. Remember, we're the ones that did the work. We're the ones building the cars, the TVs, the furniture. So and they're going to lend us the money to get back to where we started. That's right. So they will gladly lend us the $350 million collectively. Everyone gets their own little loan and stuff like this. And it's, um, now we can buy back the fruits of our production. So we we'll get that car... We can go get that, we can get that house, we can go what we want. Yep, but now we have to go in debt to buy back the fruits of our own production to do that, okay. to enjoy the fruits of our labor. Remember, we're doing what we do for each other. Right. At the end of the day, mm. you know, what you do is for people, what I do is for people, what the guys at General Motors are doing is not for themselves, it's for, for everyone else. Someone else, someone else gets to drive the car. That's right. Yeah. So, so now we all go to the bank collectively and borrow that $350 million, but then on top of that, now we've got to pay that $350 million that we borrowed, but we've got to pay that back plus interest. <laughs> so you see it gets uglier and uglier as we go on here. And um, uh, one thing about the interest now, to bring the interest into the equation, when the bank lends out that $350 million amongst us all, that $350 million is injected into circulation. Okay. Okay, but remember there's interest on those loans. Okay. And that, that interest is not part of that loan, so that interest is not injected into the economy, but it's going to be taken out of the economy with the payments... Of the, of the loan back. Yeah, so the three, $350 million is now in the economy. Everybody's using it. Yep. But Spent the interest, the bank is taking and is holding it out, and it doesn't even go in the economy. It, it doesn't exist. It just sits there. It doesn't exist, but it has to be paid back. Okay. So, right. they, so we loan $350 million into the economy, and let's say the interest rate is uh, 10% okay. over one year. So we have to buy pay back $350 million plus the 10%, so we have to pay back $385 million. But only $350 million was produced into the economy. Where are we going to get that other $35 million? It doesn't exist. Right. Okay. Now, people will think, well, I'm okay. I'm not going bankrupt. So some of us will share in the ability to pay that principal and interest, and others it simply mathematically doesn't exist. Well, let's stop here for a moment because right now, and you're quoting something that I've already heard as well, that today in the Canadian economy and in the U.S. economy, many people are actually paying their debts with their credit cards. Credit cards. So they're paying debts with debts. They're paying debts with debts. So we're talking about right now that is a certain financial failure about to happen. Oh, well, it, it might happen. I don't want to go down that path. Right. It's, it's looking that way, yes. Right. Because when, you, you can't keep doing that. No. Because okay. when, when you get to the point you're paying your debts with debts, what's that telling you? You don't have the means to pay them. Right. So the best you can do is stave off the inevitable by, I've, I've actually met people, that they'll, they'll go out and apply for all sorts of credit cards and they'll start moving the funds around the credit cards. Right. I talked to a couple, and they said, well, they made their payments every for the first year, no problem. But then come year two, now they got a $16,000 debt, debt on one credit card that has escalated into $65,000 on other credit cards. See, that money simply does not exist in the economy. Right. It's not there. 
Okay. And so what it becomes a dog eat dog world where you got to struggle to get what you can get to make your payments, which is going to cost someone else who's not going to get that ability, and that's the cause of bankruptcy. <coughs> it's a mathematical fact when we play the game like this that people are going to go bankrupt. So it's not the fault of the people. It's the way the people are behaving collectively that is causing others burdens and ourselves. It's falling upon ourselves totally. Well, is this where we introduce your take on using the, mon the Monopoly game board as a prop to explain the economy? Is this where we do that? Probably a very good time. All right. I, so I, I find that the Monopoly game is very, people can follow along with that very simply. You came across this one day because you were going to a seminar. You woke up in the middle of the night and you said, I, and you got a message, you know, you, or it came to your mind. You said, use the Monopoly game. People yep. have all played the Monopoly game. Yep. And people, right. people can relate yeah, to this you, game. When you did this this time, when we were talking in the green room, I'm like, Vic, thanks for bringing the game. Yep. All yes. right, this is going to be kind of cool. Because this game does represent what's going on in Canada, what's okay. going on around the world with the buying and the selling and the commodities. Okay, so here's the game. I'm going to hold the game up, right? So we got our game, which is called Monopoly Game, right? <laughs> All right. That's right. We're going to do this on a two shot if we can go to the twos. Right. We understand that in order to play this game, <clears throat> first off, a player requires a token to play. Right, so you got, I, I like the shoe. Okay, you, you, you'd be the ballerina, and I'll be the, uh, be the thimble. Okay. But the point is, is that if you don't have a token to play the game, you can't play the game. Right, because I don't okay. know where you are, so I got, this is, I'm going to play the game. And the reason this is important for people, because the token in the real world is your birth certificate. If you don't have a birth certificate, you cannot get a bank account out there. That's true. You cannot get a social insurance number, which means you cannot gain employment. And so without the birth certificate, you cannot play the game. So although we're using this as an analogy here, this is the token to play this game. In a big game out there, it's the birth certificate that you all have that is the token. And you cannot play out there without that birth certificate. You cannot play Monopoly without a token. Okay, that's fair. So that's to put things in perspective for people. All right. Okay, so okay. you can't play this game and get money or pay taxes through the token on this game if you don't have a token. Same thing goes out there. So I can't go out there and play in the game unless I have a birth certificate. That's right. Because okay. without that birth certificate, you cannot get a bank account. Right. Because you can't, let me re clarify this, without a birth certificate, you cannot get a driver's license, you cannot get passports, a social insurance card, so you have no identification to show a bank. Okay. All right. Period. Okay. So good. you can't play. All right. Okay. So the, the, but the critical thing here, that I, the, the main point I want to make with this is, is that with respect to the token, let's remember one thing here, people, that we are not the token. We're the player. We're standing <laughs> on, we're the, we're the one playing that's, the game. Like, that's we, right. That, we're not walking on that board. Oops, that's right. I thought I canceled that. We, we're, we, we, we're not walking on the board. In this case, we are actually doing what? Well, again, with the game, we, we need the token to play the game. And so in the real world, you need the token to play the game. Okay. And, uh, for example, in order to, but that, the key point I want to make here is, is that the player is not the token. Okay. So if the token, for example, was to land on a space on the game board here in Monopoly that required the token to pay tax, that has nothing to do with the player. So the token has to pay, in this case, the birth certificate has to pay tax. That's, the, the, yeah, the, the, and the birth certificate, uh, the, the best analogy there is, is because there's basically 30 million people in Canada, we have 30 million participants in the game Monopoly, but we don't, can't all get a colored token because there aren't enough colors in the spectrum for that, so we get a birth certificate with a legal name on it, each, in, each different. So now we all have a different token, a different birth certificate. I have a Garth Riley birth certificate, that's right. so that's my token to play the and, game. And interestingly enough, when I met with the Registrar General, Deputy Registrar General in Ontario, she referred to this birth certificate as a valuable token. <laughs> so so let's get this straight. That you went and talked to the registrar, but that's where everybody every birth is registered. Yep. Yep. And she says it's a valuable token. token. The birth certificate. The birth certificate is. And again, you it cannot, isn't who you are, it's the game piece. That's correct. And it is cool. not personal identification. It is not it is personal not, ID. She made she was very adamant about that. It is not personal identification. A birth certificate is not personal ID. No more than this token is personal identification. So Remember. But, okay, all right, fine, keep going, man, all right. <laughs> the token is to play the game. The player is not the token. The, right. the, the player is separate from the game. Right. It's the token that is subject to the rules of the game, not the player. Right. Okay, and all the laws, rules, and regulations out there pertain to the legal name on the certificate, not the people who are the player. Okay, although we get we need, to, we need to get that in mind. Right, here. so we're just saying, for example, for a moment, our token to play the game is our birth certificate, yep. but that birth certificate isn't me as a person in a physical form. It's no. represented in some kind of a document. It's a legal document. Okay, that's all it is. Yep. So I am here as this person, yep. as a natural person, yep. but I am not a birth certificate. No. Nope. Okay. Well, that's up for you to decide. Well, I, I don't see you as a birth certificate, but no. lots of people out there, if they're asked for their identification and asked, is this you, they will say yes. Right. It's, it's like saying they're a token. 
Right. You say, is this you? You say, no, I'm not that. That's right. No, this is... This is this is a piece of paper. Give you a head or shake. This is me. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. So we're gonna we're gonna go. So now we're talking about this. We've got about thirty seconds before we want to go to the next break. So now that we understand that we are there, the, it's like, like like the movie, The Matrix, and Perfect. that these tokens are in the game. That's right. Now we're gonna come back and talk about what. Well, we're, we're going to take a little bit further here with the, with, the, with the relevancy and the meaning of this token and how people have got them bound, bound themselves to the rules of this game right. that's being played out there for, because we forgot we're the player. We're separate from the game. We're not subject to any part of this thing. It's here. like we went in and we stood on the board and thought that was our role. That's right. <laughs> All right. I like this thing. All right. Coming back with more of Vic Beck. Be- Beck. Sorry. <laughs> Beck. Beck. Token. And uh, financial, uh, financial fallacies, maybe, some here. Worth a look, anyways. Stay with us. First Take Live continues.